Hello, Mike Hagan, leader of the Strength Team, and so glad that you're back with us in another podcast edition of Mike Hagan and the Strength Team podcast. And today we've got a very special podcast for you today. It's going to show a little bit of the history of the uh, my journey. Of course, uh, uh, you know, I, I gave my heart to Christ when I was a junior in college, playing college football in, uh, at the University of Montana. That was 1981. I gave my heart to the Lord, and it changed my life. You know, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.17, it says, For anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. That old things pass away and that everything becomes brand new. We become a brand new person in Christ when the Lord comes to our heart. God changes us from the inside out. And that's what he started to do in my life a long time ago, about 31 years ago exactly that the Lord started changing me. And uh, after, you know, playing, I played, uh, I was in camp with the Seattle Seahawks in 1982. 1983 was a part of the USFL Michigan Panthers. This is the ring. It's my wedding ring. It's also the Panthers championship ring uh, back in 83 that I played in the USFL. Then 84 and 85 with the Gunslingers, San Antonio Gunslingers, and then finish with an 86 with the Seahawks back. And that was pretty much the end of my professional football career, five years professional football. But at that time, I wanted to be in ministry. And at that time, uh, I met a guy by the name of John Jacobs, who was the leader of a group called the Power Team, which is kind of the founder of this time, but strength type of ministry, John Jacobs. And at that time, I started 1986 uh, with John Jacobs and the Power Team. It was December of 1986. We got some scenes and some footage from old uh, power team days back in the Coliseum meetings. Of course, started with the power team in 1986 and then 14 years of the power team. But you're going to see some early footage of Mike Hagan when he was with the power team. Power. Luke chapter 10, power. verse 19. Behold, I give unto you power to trail on serpents and scorpions power. and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing power. shall by any means hurt you. Check power. it out. I'm rapping on the mic, the true power of God Cause God gave us the power God gave us the power A lot of people think Christians are weak God gave us the power You know what? God gave us the power and young Christians all alike Now come and listen to the words flowing through this mic If you come to see me rap, no I'm not a sucker hood There are people that are bad, and people who are good When I rap the good and bad, I speak spiritual growth I step to the mic, and minister to Pope All demons will scatter, Satan thinks that he's better But to climb on my level, Satan, you will need a ladder Cause I'm up here, and you are down there You little runt, I will be bumpy because I know you don't dare Mess with the one who says check one, two, yo Taking out the devil's what I like to do And you can tell me to spell out I am speaking words and rhyme from the preaching Puerto Rican Call Satan to punk and he replies that he didn't I roll my eyes and say, huh, I know he didn't God gave us the, God gave us the, God gave us the power God gave us the power God gave us the power Yeah, power, power Yo, sing no more on the floor, with the different kind of vibes you can't ignore. Hello, my mellow, and also my fellow believers, receivers, it's time for me to tell all that needs to be said and read and read. Yell all you want because Satan has fled. I hope you're not refusing. Excuse my intrusion. This is my conclusion. No, it's not hallucinating. Sensation with a ration of a rhyme. Be patient. 
this plenty of time for me to unfold around that bold. When I'm old, I'm told I'll still be cold. I'm beaten and beaten, cause Satan ain't cool. I just need Satan like I'm shooting some pool. Satan needs demons to back him up. I'll look, I'll laugh him, and I'll rack him up. The break I make is so hard to take. With God's power, I can shake. Any evil spirit, you hear it? Don't fear it. Got a problem in your life? Got him clear it. Demons like the balls, I'm rolling in the pocket. I'm shooting some pool. I got a rhyme, I'll rock it. Every last demon is gone. That's it. I put up the rack in my cue stick. I'm rapping for God, and no, I won't quit. Every single rhyme I write is legit from God. And you know that. God is in my heart, and I will come show that. Love to my brothers and my sisters that I find. I pray to the Lord to run down the rhyme. In America today, a lot of people go around, and I've talked to different people, that consider themselves of being a Christian without understanding what the word Christian is. They say that they're a Christian because if they were born in America, and somehow or another that this nation was based on God, one nation under God 200 years ago, and this is supposed to be a godly nation, but many people in America would say, well, I'm a Christian because I was born in America without understanding the deep commitment and the deep commitment behind the cross. And I want to share something real briefly about commitment. And tonight, there's a lot of people, and I was thinking about a question that was, because I'm on the TV tonight, I don't want to say the person in my family. But there was a very close member of my family that I was talking to, and I was talking about, since I've been saved, that the difference that Jesus has made in my life. And that person came up to me and he says, Mike, I'm a Christian. I've done all kinds of good things. I've taken care of my family. I mean, I'm a, I'm a good person. I'm a Christian. I'm just not a born-again Christian. Unless someone is not a born-again Christian, they are not a Christian, folks. Because the Bible says, Jesus says himself, you try to lose your life, you try to save your own life, Jesus says, you'll lose it. But if you lose your life for Christ's sake, then you'll find it. You see, there's much more of a commitment than just behind the cross. There's much more of a commitment behind the word of being a Christian than just wearing a little name tag saying, I'm a Methodist, I'm a Pentecostal, I'm a Baptist. There's more of a commitment behind the cross. For the first 21 years of my life, I tried to build my life on thinking success. My father died when I was seven years old. And uh, I had a lot of insecurities and a lot of fears from that growing up. And I, I somehow thought that if I could be good in sports, because that's what I was talented at, that I could overcome the odds, I can get people to like me. I thought if I partied with my friends in high school, I thought if, if I was a young person, if I just went and, and partied and, and got drunk and got stoned and, and, and partied with everybody and was a wild man, that all my friends would like me and I'd be accepted. But you know what, there was a real loneliness in my life. And, and the more of the loneliness, the more of the insecurity, the more I went to that refuge to try to find some kind of security in it. And I didn't find any security in it. And it wasn't until when I was 21 years old for the very first time that someone shared with me about the gospel message of Jesus Christ. Not about a religion, but having a relationship with God through His Son, Jesus. Number one, if you're out there listening today, God loves you and He's got a great plan for your life. But because of the sin in your life, you're separated from God. But 2,000 years ago, Jesus came to die on the cross for your sins. And all you've got to do is ask Him to come into your life and to be your Lord and Savior. And the Bible says if you ask Christ to come into your life, then you're building your foundation in your life and, and you center your life on Jesus. The Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of His righteousness and everything will be added on to you. And what that happens is you, you switch, what I did is I switched the foundation of my life. Rather than success, I went on to play pro football after I got saved. I went on all the different things that I wanted throughout my whole life happened to me after I got saved because I started seeking the kingdom of God before anything else. Yeah, I tell you what, I was a lot younger back then, and uh, a lot of things have changed since then. I've gotten a, lot, a little bit older, hairstyles have changed. Of course, you saw the mullet, you know, that was a real popular hairstyle back then in the 80s. Uh, I had a sweet looking mullet back then. But uh, I tell you one thing that hasn't changed, and that is the message that we've been proclaiming throughout the 26 years of this ministry. And that is that God loves people and has a great plan for their life. A lot of good things are happening. God bless you, friend. And we'll see you in another edition of Mike Hagan and the Strength Team Podcast.